uh, hi, Ken. So, um, we uh, left our tavern, and uh, I think we went north or something, and we found the map that we're currently on without the hag lady and king shenanigan. Um, and after a little bit of searching, we found some buttons that might lead us to the elves, but as we were doing that, some orcs came up. And they wanted to have a diplomatic meeting with the elves. And we were like, okay, go press these buttons. And they did. One of the buttons was super bad in a very good way. But um, we did that. We saw the elves. Uh, the elves were suffering from some curse slash disease type thing. And it turns out that the orcs were looking for the wife of a... Uh, of one their orc leader who um who had sort of left after an arranged marriage this was dame iris yes dame iris um so we decided to uh split up uh the orcs were going to attack in three days if they weren't able to uh find the wife so menu went to uh, to the west using his uh, which I think Abshu was able to find out that was where the Dame Iris was last seen and he went to talk to an archmage who lived there and uh, the rest of the party went south to the orc capital to see if um, to see where the or to see if they could talk to the orc leader and get some more info on the way the party found a sawmill camp, which had proof that the uh, the orcs were planning to trap down one of the elves' big trees that was super special. I think it was like a life tree or something. It's one of the elders. One yeah. of the elder trees. Oldest trees, yeah. Yep. And then the party went and uh, met with the orc king. Well, the party minus, mind you. Uh, and found out he wasn't such a bad guy, but he had been given a ring or a pair of two rings that cursed him to be a rift wolf, probably. I don't think they know the term rift wolf, but which is sort of like a werewolf, but with the rift. Um, and he, uh, one of the king uh, rings had been stolen by Dame. Uh, iris when she left and that's why they wanted her back in the meantime my new being the greatest investigator ever and not just lucky uh went to the archmage and was like oh hey there's dame iris and they talked a bit dame iris felt that the relationship was abusive uh my new said get marriage counseling you dummy don't subject them to death and kill your people at the same time and was given the ring and a teleport back. So he gave the ring to the guy. Where's, uh, and the guy was like, hey, that's great. Now we got to figure out who placed the curse or something like that. And the arch wizard also said he suspected that a hag of placing the curse. So we went to look for the hag with the uh, orcs. Found her hut. Uh, Drevin was able to sneak inside. And the hut had a really powerful magic aura, but it was sort of being faked. Drevin stole all the faking stuff, got a potion list, list that Lake probably didn't make. And, uh, yeah. And then we went north again. And uh, found the hag with shenanigan. She was apparently that emissary. And now we're here. Okay, thank you. Um, just to clarify a few things, the so you guys know that in about a day's time from now, um, or less, maybe just a few hours once you've arrived here, the rift will alight, and when it does, the Sir Merrick Tayton and his men um, would transform. I'll, I say would because you did return the ring to Sir Merrick Tayton, and you don't know if that's going to you know that prevents his transformation, but you don't know if it prevents the transformation of his men. So the curse is essentially like a curse of lycanthropy or similar. 
which is why they've been kind of randomly attacking settlements and things and breaking the truce. For, um, uh, so yeah, so that, let's see here, I think that basically covered it all. Um, I know Miriam, you missed last time. Did you get a chance to watch the vid from? No, nope. sorry, sorry, That's no. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you, you guys are kind of back where you started, um, more or less here, except that you're face to face with the local lady right now and Goblin King Shenanigan. Um, so in this scene, he's introducing her as the ambassador that he wants to send to the elves. And, um, she is hideous. You, um, so as he begins to talk here, he, um, he'll speak first. He'll say, uh. Yes! Did you give my warm welcome to the elves? He might be looking at Abishu here as he says this. It's a work in progress. We delivered the uh, treaty though, didn't we? Yep, we did give them the... the oh, no, we, we did. Yeah. Did they have a response to that, or did we not look they into it? just looked it over, I think, and then they said they didn't know what the fuck it said. Yeah, they were a bit confused. Um, also, they were a bit busy with current matters to... Uh, gotcha, kind of gotcha. Response. Then in that case, uh, just yes. Hmm. Ah, then... They must wine her and dine her and give her a bath because she's an ambassador and and they have to do that. But she has no power to make any negotiations or treaties. She doesn't represent me. She's not my voice. She's got her own voice, I think. Yeah. So Menu is going to be completely ignoring Shenanigan and... He's in his ghost form right now, by the way. Okay. It was in the ghost form for the chase, so. And he's going to just be staring straight at the hag. Just little eyes of little void fire, a light, glaring holes in this ugly, bad lady. Mm -hmm. Agents of chaos! Um, I ask her if she knows anything about the curse. She finds it difficult to meet Manu's gaze, so she will turn towards Aradavar, and she will speak. She says, um, in sort of a, a haggard voice, There are sins it may be to discover. There are deeds it may be to delight. What new work wilt thou find for thy lover? What new passions for daytime or night? What spells that they know not a word of, whose lives are as leaves overblown? What tortures undreamt of, unheard of, unwritten, unknown? That sounds a lot like a yes. Get down to me, like, get down to me. I tell her I need her to uh, end the curse on what was the uh, half orcs uh, guy. Hmm. I missed that if you said it. She didn't say anything new here. She sort of looks at you and. So she continues saying, For the crown of our life as it closes, is darkness the fruit there of dust. No thorns go as deep as a roses, and love is more cruel than lust. Time turns the old days to derision, 
our loves into corpses or wives, and marriage and death and division make barren our lives. I would like the cast detect evil on her. All right. Does she so actually maybe... look like she's kind of undead? She does look... Uh, what's here? I sent you the portrait before, right? So, um, she definitely looks ghastly. Um, she's hideously ugly and has a horrific stench emanating from her in all directions. Um, she's dressed in barely rags that are torn and ripped with blood stains. And, um, she, uh, you're... You think it's possible that she's undead? If she could just be a horrifically ugly fae from appearances. Is there some kind of check that I can make to determine that? You could probably, yeah. Maybe by knowledge religion to see if you pick up on certain hints that clearly indicate she's undead, or uh, knowledge arcana for fae. Um, I suppose you could also do knowledge nature for fae, but this is probably. Um, I will say that Mamie's Detect Evil is has the same blinding, overwhelming aura of evil as the one that he saw on the hut. Um, this would like potentially stun him from just gazing at it here. Hmm. So that's either... F that, do I see any potion? Uh, at, when I'm done being stunned, would I see any potion reagents on her? You probably do not. Um, for... The others who are making checks here, Abishu is also trying. So then let's see here. And uh, like Abishu is primarily looking for just the creature type. Yep. So looking over here, so you know that. Um, so you and Aradav are kind of agreed, maybe. Um, maybe you're telepathically talking about it. You have. Um, you could just both come to the same conclusion. But um, looking her over, you're pretty certain she is not undead. Um, she um, has many of the like traits that might signify that she's undead, but um, you don't believe that she actually is. There's, you know, the you can almost see like her chest as she's breathing. You kind of gather that she uh, is salivating. Signs that usually show that she has at least some bodily functions. Um, for the Arcana checks, you're able to figure out that she is some type of fae, and uh, uh, that she's ta some type of fae or monstrous humanoid. You think she probably counts as both. Okay, um... Just I'm gonna um, turn on sonic focus with creature type um, monstrous humanoid. Okay. She has no. She appears to be like uh, have no apparent reaction to all of you moving up, and the Goblin King um, would probably step up here, and he would just say, "Take us to the elves now, please." That's enough questions! To enter the elven realm, she must... It was the right button, right? That killed you? Please um, don't give her 80 hit points. It, it's it, not 80 hit points. It was bad. It was negative hit points. Although I guess she's not undead. But, um... To have Eridavar, I'm gonna say... Evil, while well, pointing to her. Duh. Um, can I do an arcana roll on um the particularly the aura I saw? Not looking at it again, but like trying to make sense of it. Um, like before, it's. Would be a spellcraft check. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try, but I'm I can't use um, 
fetching the peacock for that, so it's going to suck. I thought it was for any intelligence skill. Spellcraft is an intelligence, right? Or is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, oh, oh no, I'm thinking of UMD. Never mind. Um, all right, then bluff. Uh, 40. Cause it's at plus How often can you use your pageant? Uh, it uses up bardic performance rounds. So, and I don't, I, as many times as I have bardic performance. Than that, like, I don't use bardic performance anyway, so I have a good amount of use for it. Let me see. I have it written down. I it's was not specifically I was, relevant. I'm just curious. Yeah, I just I was trying to find a way to get rid of bardic performance because it doesn't really match my new vet. This is good enough, I suppose. Okay, so then this is Manu replacing his spellcraft with his yes. bluff. bluff. And then looking it over, um, he thinks that it is quite likely that her overwhelming evil aura is a magic aura similar to the illusions that you had seen before. How can she project an overwhelming magical aura that's fake? It oh. seems that it's probably the effect of um, like an extraordinary powerful spellcaster, like someone that can create illusions that are more powerful than reality. And there's a good chance she's that spellcaster. Oh, this is going to be a bitch of a fight. Well, I, I mean, in the collective, uh, my is going to say, I don't really want to let her into the elves. She's sort of murdering them. Well, she needs to end this curse before she's going anywhere. You're not in the collective. I'm not saying that in the collective. I'm saying it out loud. All right. She has all but admitted that she was the cause of the curse, so she can either end the curse or will end her. I would tell the group <coughs> telepath through telepathy that uh, I don't believe she is the cause of the curse. I believe she may be cursed herself and that you guys should keep an eye on the Goblin King. He's more than he seems. Hmm. What are you basing are you... that on? A feeling. Like a spidey my, feeling? My spidey, my spidey senses are tingly. I don't have any proof, though. So, I guess for the first time, Menu is going to turn to shenanigan. You. What? What about me? Know you of the curse. I. What curse? I. Simply bringing her as an ambassador to the elves. They must wine her and dine her and give her a bath. Wouldn't it make sense to give her a bath before the whining and dining? That might make sense, more sense, yes. Um, um, I would also warn Menu that uh, to tread carefully, I think. The Goblin King's more powerful than he's letting on. So, oh, yeah, uh, we know. Know. yeah we're fully aware that uh, he's ridiculously powerful. Yeah, I've seen. Man, you would have informed you of his uh, presence in the veil. That alone is something that. Sorry. He's the guy who stood toe to toe with me and asked me to beat him up. 
So, yeah. I, I mean, you did. I mean, he ordered you to do it, so. Like, no, that's totally fair. I'm just saying that if he was just some fifth-level goblin, he would be dead. Um, I mean, although I think you did say you were dealing non-lethal at the time. That um, is true. Yeah. So, so um, um, hey, like, um, yeah. Abshu um, is just is using is trying to use a scent to get a better lay of the uh, tag. Okay, so as far as Abshu can tell, the scent is extremely strong, um, more potent than you may have experienced before around similar creatures that have a, a powerful odor, like trolls and maybe even a hag who's met before. Um, so. His perception doesn't tell him that anything immediately is off with the lovely lady right now. She has sharp claws here, which she's sort of holding down to the ground, and uh, her stance is a little bit awkward. Usually, you know, uh, you'd expect a hag to be sort of crouched over, baring its teeth, smiling, um, but uh, nothing too out of the ordinary just from the perception. Um, you're pretty certain that you are alone in the area, and that nothing is hiding around. Um, although you are able to see that there is a small orb in the air, maybe 30 feet up, that uh, is about the size of a marble. It's clear and uh, essentially like a small glass marble just floating 30 feet in the air. Oh, I didn't tell you guys about that. Yeah, uh, well, telepathically uh, to the entire group and only the group. There's an orb 30 feet above us. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you guys, I'm actually being scried on, probably. So, um, when you guys use your sense motive on King Shenanigan, you believe that he probably does know something about the curse. Um, yeah. The statement that he knows nothing was probably a lie. I ask him again about the curse. I told you already! That's... I'm, there's nothing more I can tell you about that. It's not, uh, it's not something I know about. I'm not, I, I, I don't know this magic stuff. You can talk to the elves, they'll tell you. What if they tell me you're the cause? Ah! <laughs> I can't, I'm, I'm, uh... <laughs> I I <laughs> would like to take the scepter that's in my hand and make a move like I'm going to break it. Okay. This is his scepter. He says, ah, no, I, I order you to stop. I obey none of your kind. And continue making motions like I'm going to break it. I thought you says, wanted the scepter. I do. I'm not breaking it. I'm bluffing him. So, I mean, I suppose you could roll a bluff then. I will. Fuck you, Goblin King. I'm bluffing the shit out of you. Um, I don't think that would be at a plus four. I'll just say, yeah. You, you, uh, you can't do this! That's, that's my scepter! You agreed to give it back! This is thing called honor! And, like, the big people care a lot about it. And... That's why they won't attack Lady Ragnell, right? Because she's like an ambassador now and they're got on her the treaty and all that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I would actually get a plus four to that. Um, but still, um, I will see. I made no such deal. Bah, 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 he did. He points over to Abishu. He says, I did. I did. You don't hold your bit into the bargain, then you all die. That was the deal. Death is no stranger to me. 
end the curse and we'll give you back your scepter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's I can't. I can't end the curse. Break, okay? break the scepter. Just break it. He doesn't want to help. Uh, sense motive on him not being able to end the curse. I suppose if the rest of you want to roll for that as well, you can. Wow, holy crap, he rolls today. We'll roll in just a second. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry, you're rolling perception or sense motive for Abishu? Oh, sorry. You wanted sense motive. Yeah, we'll keep it a one anyway. But uh, <laughs> uh, too sorry. bad. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. So. Okay, so as you guys are looking over this, um, you strongly suspect that he's telling the truth. Um, Vesper starts to notice that he kind of has a tell, um, basically the hair on his ears raises up and down, um, or seems to, before if he was lying about knowing nothing about the curse, um, now it would seem that he is honest about not knowing, or at least not being able to break the curse himself. Okay, he's being honest. Tell, tell us how to break it, or we break you. Ah! No, I, I mean, um, <clears throat> of course, uh, you would break me because I ordered you to do so. I, uh, I, I would like to try and intimidate him. Sure. Intimidate. Where are you? There you are. Oof. Yeah. Bad roll. Still good. All right. That is quite good. He is shaken here as he sort of turns to the rest of his goblins. He says, "I, uh, I think we've uh, fulfilled our our goal here. Uh, <laughs> Lady Ragnall's been delivered, and we uh, we could get going. Yeah, I think let's uh, head on." I'm gonna go up. We break the curse. Just, just take it to the elves and and uh, do as I said. He, he starts <laughs> to back away quickly. In his head, Abshu says, "And what will happen once the elves wine her, dine her, and bathe her?" He'll sort of stop here, and uh, he'll do the thing with his hair and his ears pricking up as he sort of hears Abishu speaking into his mind. He'll look over at Abishu and telepathically, he'll just say, you'll see. That does not sound like a promising course of action. He, uh, We'll just say, uh, <clears throat> so speaks the man of broken promises. He's got a point there. Mm -hmm. Which broken promise? Giving him back his scepter. Give him back his scepter. That was to the menu, I assume. Yeah, or to the whole party. Might as well honor the contract. The scepter will be returned to his grave. So... 
Yeah. Um, I want to give the scepter back. Or I want to give the scepter back shenanigan, but there seems to be disagreement elsewhere. Then telepathically back to Abishu, he'll just say, yeah. So be it. To his men, he turns and he says, Come on, guys. We're getting out of here. We've uh, completed our diplomatic mission. Um, Abishu's going to be like, Anyone against me murderizing him? Uh, to Vesper and Abishu? Not particularly. I think we'll have trouble if you murderize him. I th- he, where it, I mean, he started a plague, probably. So, that's killing a lot of people. Yeah, but will killing him fix that? Possibly. He was also a bandit king, so. May also kill us, since he's got hundreds of goblins working for I him. I mean, how many goblins are actually here? Only the group that you see here. Like, enough for his personal protection against common brigands and the like. So, like, five? Six? So, it looks like there's... So, about ten. Yeah, I see ten. Yeah, unless they're hill giant goblins, that's not a threat. Mm. Well, that's what you thought before, and you got fucked up. Yeah, but there were thousands of them before. Yeah, yeah. He didn't bring a whole army with him this time. I'm not afraid of ten hill giants. I'm not going to be afraid of ten goblins. I don't know. Um... I asked the king goblin to wait just a moment. As he does, you know, as he's sort of walking away, he moves maybe a, a relatively safe distance, and then he stops and uh, maybe turns around. Man, you saw it. I ask him uh, if it's okay if I cast a spell where we can speak just the group of us here in this small area it will cancel out all sound no one outside this group will be able to hear and if it feels better i can try to cast a non-detection spell on him but i can't guarantee it'll work the uh, shenanigan looks up uh, sorry i meant to say this is telepathically Okay. So then you speak to him telepathically here. He looks up briefly for a moment um, in the direction of the orb, looks back at you, and he says, mm, nah. <laughs> or at least he says that telepathically, I guess. Yeah. I, I tell him, uh, I think this would be best because... Uh, I'm afraid my party members may not just let you leave. So it might be better just to do what we can to cancel anything that could get in the way of us communicating well with each other. Right? Communication is key. Uh, uh, Yeah. Sure. Right. Definitely. So I take that as consent. Uh, uh, I, uh, order you to, uh, cast a spell. All right, I cast Zone of Silence, a 20-foot radius. Only those in the bubble can hear whoever's talking. And uh, 
then I say, if you do, if you feel better, I could cast non-detection on you, but uh, whoever seems to be watching us, if they're pop, if they're more powerful, the likelihood of it working is slim. Uh, don't bother. It's fine. Clearly, you're worried about whoever is watching. Uh, so, any idea or clues on uh, what's got you so scared? <clears throat> well, you see, there's only one mage likes to look into elven settlements in the area, and uh, who can make scrying orbs. So I know what that is, and I know he can see us, and it doesn't really matter if he can hear us or not, or if he can't detect me or not. It, it doesn't matter. Um, can we communicate to Dranic telepathically? Or do we just have no way of talking to Dranic right now? Well, silence doesn't well, affect silence. telepathy. Well, without the... I don't know if Dranic's telepathy would let me send him messages, and he's not in the collective, so... Telepathy's two ways, so I think once he turns it on, we can all talk to him. Yeah. So, then I would say to Dranic, yeah, the, the, the scry isn't related to him. That's something I have. Oh, uh, whatever it is, it's got the got him so worried he's willing to risk you murdering him just to get away from it. So, I, I think that's actually me that's scaring him, not the scry. You think a lot about yourself, but all right, if you truly think that's what it is. Well, I mean, he's saying that too, but. Well, then, how would you like to proceed? Oh, I'm murdering. Would you like this to end without bloodshed? Oh, I don't yeah, believe they're that killing that people. Deliberate. He's killing all the elves and stuff with his fucking curse. Chaos yeah. people. You mean you think he is? Well, we know the we know the the hag is. We know he knows about the curse, and he's lying about it. I don't believe the hag is capable of this. I'm not even sure it's a hag. Well, I mean, you think she's not, but the evidence we have points to her. And who do you who pointed that evidence out? Um. Both the archmage that I talked to, and the uh, the half orc, and Lady Iris. Damn, Iris. I don't remember that half orc mentioning anything about the hag. Well, he agreed with it once it was put forward, and we know um, this guy knows about the orc. trap. So we know this guy knows about the curse. The hag orc is, or the hag is speaking some stupid riddles. It probably that sound like she knows about it. I think I feel like we're pawns in someone else's game. So you want to just let everything proceed without doing anything? No, I, I want info. I just. Uh... How are you going to get info if he leaves? Why do you think I stopped him? Well, yeah, but you weren't stopping him. So I, did. I was stopping him. Out loud, I say, fine, do whatever you want, menu. 
I'll deal with what comes. And I'll leave this sphere of silence. Um, so are you going to drop it or drop the sphere? Nope, it's still there. So we're not really going to be able to talk to him. No, you if can, you're within you 20 feet of him, if you're in that 20-foot circle, anyone in that 20-foot circle can talk to him. Oh, gotcha. It's a sound bubble. Gotcha. All right. Sorry, I misunderstood. Um, I did it so whoever's crying on us can't hear our words. So to this guy, I will say, final chance, tell us what you know of the curse and get your item back. Three dozen eyes roll upward. <laughs> um, while this is going on, the hag isn't like she's not privy to the conversation within the zone of silence, and she doesn't really understand or seem to be engaged with that conversation she's sort of keeping an eye on all of you and uh looking towards um like looking for the entrance to the domain of the elves she obviously um as she's looking to the north you realize she must know where it is mentally to the uh <clears throat> hag What is your relation to shenanigan? Are you a pawn in his game? So you um can give me a will save, please. Alrighty. Enter the hag's mind. Good choice. Okay, that's quite a good call. And your circumstance bonuses are Eight. Minus eight. <coughs> okay. Okay. Huh. You are a swarm. Yep, he can be a swarm. All right, so then so you take 13 points of psychic feedback and you are pushed from out of her mind. All right, um, how do I count for that? Like, is that just damage? That is just damage, yeah. It's a type of damage that applies to your, to your mind. It counts as an energy type of damage. Okay, can um, is that one of the things auto hypnosis can be used to shrug off? You probably could, yes. How's it 20 like? All right. So I guess that does reduce the damage. Um, sorry, I need to call exactly what you can do with that. Yep, yep, yep. So let's see. <coughs> Holy fuck, did so, I do yeah. it? 
Okay, so I think you can um, essentially reduce that damage um, to one half. Yeah, so to half of that. So we'll say that you only take six damage instead of 13. All right. Guys, I need to share. I did it. I got a 3080. Fuck yes. Does Sorry. he uh, appear to show any signs of effectively taking damage? Um, he. His... Well, you can describe it because yeah, it's all in his say... mind. Yeah, I was going to say probably uh, uh, telepathically to the party. <sighs> so much for polite communication. Did she hurt you? Actually, wait, the stealth axe. Did she hurt you? Because I would a take minor bit. Hmm. I attempted to speak with her. Her mind is worse than mine somehow. All right, so then Shenanigan will just respond to Mania here. He says, So push it. You keep pushing, you're gonna fuck it all up. I'll fuck you up, you son of a bitch. Is that an intimidate check or an initiative roll? That, that's an intimidate. I'm, I, 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 I... I'm not quite at the murderized stage yet, but I'm very close. Okay. By the way, my intimidate is better now. So my shaken is plus three instead of plus two, just to make things harder on you, Lee. Okay. That's, uh, yeah. Something I'm going to have to keep track of. Um... You'll need to remind me of that later as well. I will. Okay. I, I will. I am trying to figure out a way to get this all to add up. I think I can do like a single macro for it um, okay. to show it. But All right. Well, I usually set them as buffs on the sheet. So, yeah. Um, <coughs> so here he's just going to be like, uh, <clears throat> ah, uh, hey, yeah, you're actually going to try to kill me. Uh, um, damn it. Uh, well, uh, well, I mean, yeah, it's just, uh, well, see, see, I, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I have, I have a theory. What is this theory? As um, he sort of glances up one more time before beginning to speak to Manu, um, Dranik will notice that the hag's intellect suddenly jumps to 30. She sort of looks at those around her, and uh, you guys see a number of spells instantly activate, um, at least one of which is Mirror Image. We will begin combat. Uh, wait, who attacked? So the loathly lady just changed. All right, well, fuck. I didn't do it. it wasn't me. <laughs> Time to murderize. Technically, it was the Goblin King that did it by talking about it. All right, um, so I am going to, as part of the initiative, force the lady to make a I think it's a wisdom save yeah, wisdom uh, sorry I, I shouldn't use the I shouldn't use the initiative macro I need to actually roll from the sheet uh, creature within medium range to will save will save okay uh, that's a failure holy shit all right um, she takes a However, minus one oh. is this a mental mind affecting effect um, mind affecting fear. 
Okay, so then she gets a plus eight on that, and you have to give me a will save. Fuck! All right. Um, plus eight. I think that would pass. Um, let me just make sure. Do you, do you remember off the top of your head what the DC for your sphere effects are? Um, it's equal to 10 plus half level plus your ability mod. Your casting okay. ability mod. All right, 10, 3. <laughs> Uh, no, that would actually fail. Hell yeah! Okay. So 22 <laughs> would fail? All right. Yeah, I have a 23. Because okay. of this fucking staff. Hell okay. yes. You, you do still have to make a will save, though. Yep, that's fine. That is fine. Uh, 20. Okay. Then you also... Oh, this is, this is... So you take 11. All right, was that a failed will save? Um, You don't know. Well, I have stalwart, so... Okay, so then it wouldn't matter. So this is not a failed save. It's an 11, okay. and you do not affect her with a mind-affecting effect. So, uh, so I passed a save, or... Sorry. So you passed... So you managed to overcome her will save. So anything that's not a mind-affecting effect of your ability would go through. Anything that is a mind-affecting effect would not, and you take this damage. Okay, so... Sorry, I, I'm. So I just need to know if my will save against what she's doing to me passed. It did not. Okay, gotcha. All right, so I take the eleven. Yeah. Oh fuck! So if she, oof. Did this? So sorry, the full ability that you did to her. There's the fear effect, the mind affecting effect. But was there anything else then? Nope. It's all mind affecting fear effect. Okay. Okay. Then yes. Yeah, so she'd be unaffected. All right. Gotcha. Um. Well, I guess we'll see what the goblins do. All right. Uh, sorry, Abshu. I'm probably not going to be able to eat a lot of damage for you this initiative for this combat because I think this is going to hurt a lot. Um. Miss yeah. Well, and like before hostilities uh, had commenced, if you look in the history, I had just uh, used an ability to heal that damage. Yes, I did see that. And I saw that uh, Aradabra had cast shield as well before. Okay, I think we've got everyone here. Um, Goblin King Shenanigan. Um, so he's just going to make a full withdraw here, as he's like, ah! Shit! Too late! And, uh, he's going to move away from menu. Yep, I don't have anything that would, that would let me, uh, attack on that, so. Okay. So then he just pulls off the edge of the map, as he is full-on running away. Several of the goblins here begin to do so as well, so... So let's see here. So I'm just going to move these guys to the edge as well as they are following the lead. Oh, those are some fast ass goblins. Yeah, they rolled pretty high for the. Why did they all roll so high? Yeah, the goblin luck. Fucking little. I mean, they. I think they just rolled high. <laughs> Look at this. It's yeah, 17. like he's got like ten numbers that are above fifteen. Yeah. No. Look at the rolls. It says seventeen, nine, fourteen, yeah, 18, yeah, yeah. 19, 20. <laughs> They're just really fucking lucky. Fifteen, fifteen, nineteen, <laughs> seventeen, and then eleven. For those are just really fucking lucky goblins. That's all awesome. Right. He's used up all his good rolls on the goblins running away. Yes, perfect. That's just what we need. Oh my god. Okay. Um, let me give myself my aura. So then it would be Vesper's turn. Oh. Shoot, I wasn't paying attention, so I don't really know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> We're fighting. 
We're fighting. Okay, okay. Are we fighting her? Yep. Yep. Okay. I guess I'll attack her. All right. Go over here. Um. Yes. Ah, oh, shit. I don't think you would get. Oh well. Okay. You've got a fancy automatic um, flanking ability, don't you? Oh, uh, yes. So you should probably go and one south. Run through her. It doesn't really matter where she goes, I believe. Actually, well, it does, it because if she's flanking with me, I get sneak attack as well. Well, you're flanking with Dranic. Yeah, but Dranic's not going to stand and fight. Well, I don't think he has much of a choice. Uh -huh. Okay, you okay, well, in that case... I'll go here and I'll try to, I'll try to run through her. All right. <laughs> so just jog around her for a minute. Okay. Great. Um, just to clarify, my aura would give people within it the outflank uh teamwork ability which What's that give you if two people if both people flanking have it you get a plus four on your attacks that's handy yeah it's quite nice so, so how I big is the aura it's 30 feet i don't know if you can see it so right now aradavar would benefit from it but i don't think vesper could get it because it doesn't allow you to i i would have to ask if I to clarify on this get over there then I yeah I, so this would have to be a clarification from lake but i think the way it works is even if you have it and you're flanking with yourself since it's a teamwork feat it requires two creatures i'm not sure though okay so uh, if so, the, sorry, it's a teamwork feat at half flank, as I recall, it just requires um, both of the creatures to have it. Um, and, yeah, basically, if you guys are both, like, threatening the creature, then I think it applies, right? You, the problem is that I don't know if just you having it in what she's doing technically with her overhead head flip is flanking with herself. It does count as flanking with its, herself. It explicitly so it would apply? Yes. Oh god. That yeah, because both of her have it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Alright, that's good. Then way to be a oh, team player, god. Vesper. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you flip oh. over to here, then you would be you would be good. Yes, I'm trying. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying. So the twenty four is just enough. So you, you do make it to the other side. You leave an image behind. Yes. And Tech. All right. I really should be paying attention. I wasn't paying attention at all, so no idea what's going on. Oh no. Kill it. Oh, it's okay. Okay. So then the. Let's see. So that would all be at a plus four, I believe. Oh, wait, sorry. Okay, so um, you miss with the first attack. You hit with the second, um, but it hits a mirror image, not the her true self. The third attack also, um, so your following strike normally only allows you to attack a different creature, um, and only if both attacks hit, but you also uh, took the um, triple blade thing. So this is where you'd punch out a... Yeah. Blade yes, I have a secret knife. Yeah. In my so shoe. She's got like a <laughs> secret knife in her shoe, which happens to have the same stats as a rapier. I'm very, very stabby. Anyway, she tries to follow it up with the triple blade style or whatever, and um, that takes out an image as well. But she deals no total, like, no real damage here. Hey, taking out the images is extremely useful. Those things are. Um, in Pathfinder, the AC of the images is uh, the AC of the creature minus five, essentially. 
So if you go within five of their natural AC, you take home damage. If this would work. Uh, which means technically the first attack would have done it too. You're right. Okay. Um, so is that it for Vesper? Yep. Okay. Uh, this goblin's gonna run away. Run, run away. And then we're to menu. All right. Sorry, I'm looking at something. Um. So that Grand Purifier class was sort of weird, um, but I think I have how it works down. Okie doke. Uh, gonna go up here. Uh, silently, she can't hear me. Uh, so I'm very sneaky. It doesn't matter, but I am. Um, yeah, so my martial focus is extended. Okay, how, how long do I move here? I'm going to be... She seems scary, so I'm going to be pulling out all the stops here. Um, she would need to make a fortitude save once I end here. Okay, and this is not mine affecting? Um, I don't think so. Let me check. I, I mean, I, the way it's... Can, the way it is... Zing tumble. Um, she passes anyway. Okay. Um, then I am going to use. We we ruled that. Um, actually, it doesn't matter right now. So I am going to use two abilities in one attack, because apparently with the thing I can do this. So I'm going to use illuminated, which is allowed to use on a uh, this is uh, on a attack action and make that a special attack and use poltergeist spending a point um, so that is actually 28 32 to hit and the perform dance to get over her to be come over here um, so would the perform dance let me get past without any AOs? Yes, it would. Okay. Um, so she needs to make another fortitude save. Okay. And I don't know if that hits her or hits an illusion. It hit an illusion. All right. She would still need to make the fortitude save. Um, so she would be nauseated, I think, for a round. Is it nauseated or if the ability says sick? So um, if 15 feet or less are uh, moved, and creature hasn't been nauseated, it's nauseated. So since I, I only moved 10 feet, it would be nauseated. Okay. This is for the tumble ability of the athletic sphere. And I think the illusion would be destroyed, but uh, I wouldn't get poltergeist or illuminated off. And okay. that would cost me a spell point. All right, and um, that's my turn. Okay. And she managed to nauseate her, so that's that's good. She will use her immediate action here to negate the nauseated condition. Hey, burning immediate actions is also quite good. All right, then it is Abishu's turn. All righty, so gonna roll a perception. Can I? Well, does the uh, mirror image work uh, against scent? Um, it does not, but um, scent doesn't normally allow you to have the precision to pick out um, when they're occupying the same space, like mirror images. Oh, okay, so mirror images are all in there, got it. Um, then I'm going to five foot step back, and then... Mm 
launch a disrupting pattern. Okay. So there's that mind affecting fear effect. And um, would it be, well, one, does that hit her or um, your image? So this one hits her. Awesome. No, that's not awesome. So this is a mind affecting effect. So then you also have to give me a will save. All righty, will save. And that perception check was to see if uh, um, she took the full damage, uh, uh, or well, basically if uh, his disrupt pattern had uh, a full effect, or if it would have been halved for not having the right creature type. So it does have the right creature type, and it would deal the full damage. So the damage happens, but then the the mind affecting effect does not the uh, fear effect here. So it'd be 18, right? Yes. Okay. Yep, she takes the full damage. Is that all for Abishu? Uh, yes. Okay. So then she, on... She bloodied. She's not bloodied. <laughs> 18 damage. All right. Okay. Um, so let's see here. So then this version is going to let's see here. So she will five foot step to here. And since Abishu actually damaged her, she will. Let's see. So she's going to um, step over and make a an attack against him. It looks like a miss and no damage. So then we move over. Um, I would like to use reaction. Sure. And she does an attack. I'm going to actually. Okay, let me post this. I'm gonna just. I need to. I'm gonna try bad karma, but if it's mind affecting, I won't do it. I'm not sure. Um, where are you? Uh, I don't think that's mind affecting. It's a curse, right? Um, I don't think curses are automatically mind affecting. No. All right. So yeah. Um, since he's in the collective, I will activate this for him and spend a um, spend two key points to allow anyone who's in the collective to activate that once, I think. Okay. But so he spent the indicator or did you? I did. I did. This okay. is me countering for him. So I would take the damage since it's a will save, I think. 
but she needs to make the DC 22 will save. Okay. You can make a will save as well. Fuck. All right. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, that's a fail. Okay. So then... Let's see. Nothing happens. We move to Aerodama. Okay. Um, I will five foot down. And then I will key strike, flurry, power attack the shit out of her. Okay. Uh, is a 25 a hit on her? So you can give me... So it's 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, attacks. You would, get, you would also get the plus 4 from outflank if you're not counting that. I am not counting 2 of it. I use the 2 for flanking as my 2 for power attack. Okay. So well, they're all no, too higher extra, than that. You get an extra plus 4 on top of the 2 from flanking. I thought outflank was replaces it. It um, increases to plus four. It's not an additional plus four. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. My bad. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, whatever. I have it right. Okay, so he gets plus two in these attacks, and then can he give me a will save, please? Um, he can actually give me four will saves. Or, no, three. Well, there's a crappy okay. one. I'm going to fake so the, point that. The last one doesn't matter. Um, you don't roll it, so you don't need to roll a fake point. By the second attack, um, you realize that um, she is entirely an illusion. She was real a moment ago. She is no longer real, this version that you see in front of you. Interesting. Well, that solves that problem. All right, you can give me a perception check. Okay. So then, and you don't have any special senses, right? It's just basic senses? Nope, I'm just a normal person. Okay. So, this, uh, realizing this one's real, you can probably glance around. Try to see if something strange is happening. Um, as we move to Drannik, Drannik can detect that there is no intelligence here. But there is an intelligence here. All right. Uh... Going to step back. Cast haste and tell them that there's something to the north. Uh, and if someone has magic circle against evil or some or protection against evil, it might be a good idea to use it on the creature we're fighting. Are you are just any specific and just to the north? Uh, I guess 50 feet north of me, behind the pillar. Is that a pillar? Yep, that's a pillar. Just behind the pillar? All right. Just a suggestion. I saw flashes of intelligence appearing at random people throughout throughout this conversation. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone hopping bodies 
or taking controls. Is there now? <laughs> <laughs> so after draining who's back um, he still has actions for the turn he can communicate to the party but uh, that's a free action so what will he do with his actions oh I said step back and cast haste oh haste I didn't hear that okay so that's on everybody yeah well yeah it should be okay and everybody can get and that's a free does Vesper still have the spider climb or something? She's had that boot on forever. No, it's just the default token you keep pulling out. It's the same with mine. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, well, everyone's tasted. Um, then we would move to Vesper. Okay. I'll run to the north behind the pillar. And look around. All right, can make the perception check. Okay. Make a good attempt, but you don't see anything. Um, if Dranik is telling the truth, she must be invisible. Okay, I don't see her. I swear she's there. Or something's there. I shouldn't say she is. Something's there. If you wanted to, I think you could still attack the square that he indicated she was in. Just yep. you got a mischance. Yeah, okay. she's. You would effectively be blinded when you fight her. Okay, I'll attack the air. <laughs> All right. Now, an interesting interaction here is that because she's invisible, um, her mirrored images do not apply. So, yeah. Aren't her mirror images on the illusion, though? They both have, uh, apparently have mirror images, but the other one is full illusion anyway, so the mirrored images on that techno group don't count anymore. That sounds like more DM cheating. I mean, it says that it's a perfect representation of them, like, essentially, and their active, like any active spells on them, so... Does that mislead? No, it's a spheres version. So, um, so okay, so wait a minute. So the so we're going to do the mischance on two attacks. No, just the one attack. Yeah. So high or low for Vesper? Hey. It is high. So you would get one good hit in. Um, it doesn't confirm, but you nevertheless deal your your damage, and it does appear to be fully effective. Oh, I so. stabbed something. Okay, and then we move to menu. All right. So with that good confirmation of where she is, gonna move up. Is there any blood or anything to indicate her presence? There is. Yeah, there's some. Bright red blood on the end of Vesper's blade, and a splattered across the ground at pillar. Yeah, but nothing like on her actual figure. No, that doesn't reveal it. All right, so now I get an interesting option. I think illuminated would still be the best way, but I wish I'm gonna. I might have something that might mess up some of your plans here, Luke. But um. So I'm going to try uh same thing, illuminated and poltergeist. Um I'm gonna use a spell point for both. So illuminated and then poltergeist. Uh ooh, so that would be twenty-two versus or twenty-four versus touch actually. Ooh, that performed dance. Uh would the thirty-two get me over? So see, right? These pillars are kind of half crumbled. They're probably only like 15 feet high, unless they're the broken ones. Uh, yeah, they're probably just 15 feet high. Um, for the 32 would get you over, um, because this is against her CMD, right? Yes. 
then she gets a bonus or you get a penalty because she's invisible, right? Um I I have no clue, honestly. Okay, sorry, let me just Is there a convenient button for that? There it is. So what does this do? No, it just does that. Actually, yeah, disregard that. I don't need the perform that actually I just yeah, disregard the perform dance it. Because I'm I have flanking anyway. All it does is it wouldn't sicken her. So that's fine. Okay. I don't have to look, spend time looking it up. Um so that would be twenty-four versus touch. Okay, that would hit here. Uh give me a uh, high, 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 high. On the mischance. Fuck, I should have gone low. It is low. Oh, well. So unfortunately you miss. Oh well. Oh well. Oh well. And uh I don't have I shouldn't I need to get fly through. Actually, oh actually, could you look up the fly th the perform dance? I realized it actually does matter because Aerodevar will be able to get flanking. If you do it the other way, you mean? Yeah, if I if I do, do the perform dance, Aerodevar will get if she doesn't move, we'll be able to come over and right. get flanking. So, from what I looked up, it so it's supposed to be that you would lose your like you'd be flat footed against her and she'd get her bonuses on attacks, but that doesn't matter when you are going against her CMB. I think they assumed you couldn't, so they didn't give a bonus or penalty against that. So, hell yeah, uh, breaking the rules. If he's flat footed, wouldn't that effectively mean he loses his decks? Well, yeah, so, but he's not using his decks for his perform dance or whatever, right? It's charisma. Yep. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so I think she does have to make the save then, so she'll do that. Yep. Uh, uh, so she's fail. sickened. So she's sickened. Okay. She will not use her thing for that then. Okay. Yep, and that'll be me. Okay. And then it is Abishu. Alrighty, so um, move up there, and um, is a spot they've been fighting between uh, Vesper and Abishu, or on the other side, you right there? Okay. Yep. Nope, and I didn't need to move that far. And then going to use a disrupting pattern. Oh, swift app chicken. Oh, never mind. I'll do that next turn. So fifteen versus touch. Okay. And the uh, fear effect. Okay, so 15 versus touch would miss, and then the fear effect would require you to make another save here. Um, if you hit her, I guess, which is, uh, you didn't, so, right, so it doesn't matter. So you just missed straight yep. up. Yep. Okay. And that's it. Okay. And then... Don't hags usually have like illusions that make them look pretty? They do. They don't care. They do. Um. So then she's going to. Let's see. Right. Uh, okay, this is getting complicated. So then, she can do that. That's all she can do, right? Yeah. So um, let's see. So she does that, and then we move to Eridavar. Eridavar 
can make a perception check if he likes. What am I perceiving? Good God, I can't roll double digits. Yeah, the, I mean, the, um, this is kind of to, like, you get another chance to try to see her. Um, you do not. I don't currently have line of sight to her anyway. Yeah, not really. I mean, there's a little bit around the pillar. But... Okay. Um, is the spot south of uh, Vesper's position right here? Can I attack from there? You believe you can, yes. Would I provoke an attack of opportunity if I went opposite Vesper? Um, you would if you moved as follows. Assuming she doesn't have reach, you should be able to move like that with 40 feet without provoking. Okay. Um, I will cast Owl's Wisdom on myself, and then I will just jump into the square opposite uh, Vesper. Okay. And I'm going to spend a key point and boost that up a little higher. Four hours out. Perfect. Look at that. Even with a plus 50 wow. bonus, I can't roll shit. <laughs> I mean, does it matter? I mean, at this point, you could pretty much like do a flip off the top of the pillar like Jack well i need a 60 to get to the top of the pillar that's why i was asking uh yeah i wanted I, to ju originally i wanted to jump to the opposite side of her but i had to clear that pillar to do it and i was like eh, i can't make a 60 just willy-nilly yeah yeah you're assuming okay. she's there yeah i'm assuming she's there i don't get an attack so it's not really relevant at this point Okay. But you made your way over, right? Yep, I'm done. Okay. Then, Dranic's turn. Um, so, Dranic no longer senses that she is there. Um, instead, she is standing there, overlapping with her previous image. <laughs> Yay, she's back over here, guys. Wow, this is fun. Is Manu flying? Uh, I'm sort of running slash flying. I can fly. Uh, I guess I'm trying to guess your altitude. Yeah, I would just be at ground level. All right. I am going to cast Fog Cloud just above her head or above our heads covering the area she's in right now okay and that's uh what's the radius of that? foot radius you said 20, 25 foot radius 20 20 foot radius all right And as I do it, I give a middle finger to the orb in the air. All right. Interesting. Why do we care about the orb in the air? I don't like being spied on. Okay, that's fair. Sure. My business is my business. And this is as the fog cloud spell? What was that? This spell is fog cloud. You said right? Yes. Okay. So then that's it for Dranic. How about for Vesper? 
Okay. <laughs> We're all back. Can we make it? Oh, I could just make it. Done. I am assuming I don't see her. So you see a creature there, which looks just like her. You can't tell if it's the real her, the image, or what. Okay, well, I'll attack it. Yes, I can only move 30 feet. I think. Oh no, we have haste, so I can. Doesn't matter. Peace, Louise. All right. So let's see here. So then that's equal to this source. Okay, so um, you do manage to destroy the image. Um, you realize it's an illusion as soon as it disappears, and you do that off your first attack. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. So then you can. Where do you choose to aim the second attack? Um, right in front of me, right here. This spot. All right. This this spot right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then you. Take a swing. Let's see here. And high or low? High. It is low. Um, you hit is nothing bad. Fours in a row? Uh, it is um, D100s. It's weird. Okay, anything else for Vesper? No. Okay, we move to Mania. Well, uh, I think the the affirmage has faded by now, right? I would, yes. Sorry. So now we'll go in the spot that it was. Give our Aradev our a chance, I suppose. Um. Then I will uh, same as before. Um. Attack the space, use illuminated and poltergeist. Um, and yeah, I, I think it wants us to go low, so I'm I'm gonna go low. That's what I've gotten. Okay, so which space are you attacking? This one, the one Vesper was getting. Okay, and then high or low. Low. That's what it's been indicating. It's going to be high now. Oh, low. Okay, it is low. So you do connect with something. All right. So whatever I connect with, um, a few things happen. Um, I, I'm not sure what the ordering for this would be. I guess illuminated would happen first. So. It needs to make a DC 21 reflex save. That's a fail. All right, it is outlined by uh, light, um, giving it a minus 20 on penalties on stealth check and negating all bonuses usually bestowed by invisibility, blink, uh, blink effects, darkness, or similar effects which I think would be sort of useful at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, wait, sorry. And then Poltergeist. I rolled for the mis her invisibility mischance, but not the fog. I think you put the fog above us. Right, Jack? Correct. I put above the fog me. above. Okay. I didn't want to interfere with the fight. Sure, sure. But I wanted to stop the orb from spying on us. Okay. Yep. Um, so she would be outlined now, which is pretty useful. Then I don't think this even gets a save. So uh, a for the next three rounds, a, a roll of my choice can get a minus three penalty. And she also needs to make a fortitude save against the damage, if she can be affected by aging damage. That's actually a failure. Um, 
Let's see. What does she do? Sorry, let me double check. Yeah, so this if she's right. immune to supernatural aging, it would not matter. And she would get only seven damage. Yeah, so she doesn't take the supernatural aging too much. All right. And seven precision damage and a 39 to demoralize. Okay. Then, okay. Oh, and a minus two to all saves for two rounds. Yeah, yeah. I've got that one applied. Um, this is that. And then, have the. Sorry, man. I gotta double check one thing. So as you can all see, Manu is now good because he can bathe people in holy light. You should all be aware that he is the goodest of boys now. So if I come over and turn on my Radiant Order, you'll be fine with that? Absolutely. I'm a good boy. Okay. Not all undead are evil. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Okay. So, yeah, so then she is shaken as well. Hell yeah. Minus three shaken. I, uh, wait, is it minus three? We'll say it's minus three. It might be minus four at this point. Okay. Minus three shaking. Fuck her. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, it's still minus three. It becomes minus four next level. All right. That's what I was forgetting. I knew I was forgetting. Okay. Sorry, ignore me. We move to Adashu. Alrighty. So, swift action. Uh, does 16 versus touch it? It would not. Oh. Okay. So that does nothing. And then disrupt Sorry. 22. Um, can and you then miss chance. roll a perception oh. check for me? Because that might matter, since she is eliminated. So, let's see here. And sorry, that was a perception? Yes. Okay. So then that would hit her. Oh, wait, I just realized. So then, that changes that, but that still doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so you would hit her with the 22, um, and you would see her with the 27, so there's no mischance from that. Um, however, she does have several images up, which you can see now that she's no longer invisible. So then, let's roll for that. For being technical, she would still be invisible. She would just be illuminated by light. She right. But I think that would. Still but the images the wouldn't be. They might be if it's it's an effect on her. So I don't know. So it's supposed to be that the illusions are always a perfect copy of her, including the magical effects that are on her. So it should be that she is still eliminated, or and the images are too. So I think that you would miss on account of that, and you take out one of the, the images. Alrighty then. Uh, that's it. Okay. Um, so then it would be her turn here. Um, she would make kind of a confused motion as she sort of is looking around. Um, she looks around, just glances like right past Vesper and Manu. Um, can, let's see here. Drank, call me a high or low, please. Hi. 
It is high. And can many do the same? Um, low. It is low. Yeah. Oh, as low as it goes. Wow. Okay. I'm great at this. So yeah, um, she's just kind of confused here, standing around, um, or at least she appears to be. We move to Aerodama. I don't believe. Okay, uh, I will cast Strength and then repeat my action and jump back down. All right. Oh. My. God. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing you have such a bonus on the check that you can make that. But, um, do you succeed? Do you jump down? Probably jump through the mist a little bit. Um, assuming nothing else for Aerodavra, we move to Drannik. Telepathically, I ask her, is she coherent? Okay. You can give me another will save. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Damn it. <laughs> Bad Slevin. Bad. I was just going to say, what the hell are you doing? All right. I'm taking damage is what I'm doing. All right, so you take nine points of damage, and you fail to tell how they communicate with her. All right. Uh, I really don't want to talk. Uh, let's see here. What can I do? What's the range on Blur? I think it's touch. Yeah, touch. You could move over and Blur Vesper. Uh, let's see here. Just a second. 